Give it up for Nick. All right, everybody. Um, let me know if I need to speak up at all, or if you have questions, you know, you can raise your hand, whatever. Um, so today we're talking about portfolios. You know, we got, we got a little bit for everyone. So if you don't want to code, we're, you know, we got plenty of stuff for you too. You're not just gonna be sitting here. Um, so we're gonna talk about some general tips as far as just making portfolios, and then we're gonna talk about some website builders. Uh, so that you can build a website for free or pay services without having to do any coding. And then we're going to, I've made a template for you all, so if you want to take out a GitHub repo, you can create your own content and start using that. Um, so your portfolio, you got kind of three different purposes for it. Um, pretty much every job application is going to have a spot to put a link to your own website or whatever you want to do to show off your work. So that's... That is probably your primary purpose for this portfolio. You want to be able to show what you're doing to an employer. Um, you also want to be able to have some kind of web presence. So if someone's searching up your name, maybe they're looking for Nick McLean, the programmer. You know, they should be able to see my website. And so you can see right here on the on the right side, like if someone searches up Nick McLean or Nicholas McLean, like I'm right there. So and an employer or someone else, they can they can see me if they're searching up uh, to see who I am. And then it's really easy. It's really useful to show off your work. So if I'm out and about, or you know, just kind of want to talk about stuff I'm working on or anything I've done before, I can just pull out my phone. I can type in my website, and then I can start showing it to people. And you know, other people can do the same. Um, the biggest thing on a portfolio is you want quality over quantity. Um, so don't just have every single project you've ever worked on from high school and college and beyond. You want to really just take what is good and what you really want to show off. So we've got Foos right here, and Foos done all kinds of stuff, but he doesn't put everything on his portfolio. He's only got, I think he has about five or six things on there at the moment. Um, mostly gun stuff, and that's 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 what he wants to do. He's doing a lot of weapon modeling, so it's all high quality assets. It's all guns. They all it's cohesive. Um, and you know anything between at least like two or three things, but you know just whatever really good. If you look at kind of professionals, they might have you know 20 or 30 things, and it's because they've been working for years and they've been working in a full-time position. Like they've been paid to make those things. Yes. Yeah. As a student, all those sorts of things like pretty much are going to be in your free time. So it's okay if you only have a couple. Um, and I know that a lot of people will kind of think, eh, it's not it's not a big deal if I just have some older stuff in there. But employers or people looking at your portfolio, if they see a hundred things and they see a whole bunch of really bad assets in there or pieces, um, they're going to question, like, can you tell what's good or not? Because if you have some kind of asset you made from like high school and it looks terrible compared to something that, like a gun that Boo's made right here, like they're going to question, like, do you think that these are equal in quality? Um, so you want to limit it to what, what is actually good. Um, you want to tailor your, your portfolio just like you would tailor a resume to whatever you're, you're trying to focus on. So a common thing that some people will do is they'll make different pages on their portfolios, their websites, one for each kind of field. So like Brandon, he has stuff for, for games or like coding, and he has stuff for specific environments or you know like art pieces that he's worked on, or maybe shader stuff. And so it just makes it cohesive. So if I go to the page about programming, because that's what I provided to like an employer or something, and they'll see just the programming stuff because that's relevant to whatever you apply to. Um, and there's different ways of doing that. You could also just do completely different websites. Like maybe you have an art station for your art stuff and you have a website for your programming stuff. It's kind of whatever you want to do. Um, you can get custom domain names. So like I have one for nicholasmcclain.com and it, that's not really required at all depending on how your hosting stuff URL you have probably works fine. Like if you use GitHub and your name, if your username is something similar to your name, so like mine's Nichols McLean, then the URL will be nicholsmclean.github.io. Like that's, who cares? It doesn't matter. Um, but if you want to get a domain name, a custom domain, you know, they're about 10 or 15 bucks a year, so it's, you know, it's affordable. Uh, a couple things that you want to look out for is if you get the domain, you want to make sure that you actually own it. If, you want to make sure that whoever's providing it to you isn't just going to steal it from you as soon as you try and quit them. Uh, you also want to watch out for if they're going to hike up the price after a year contract. Like if they give you it for a couple bucks the first year and then like 30 bucks a year after that, you probably want to avoid that. Um, 
And then you can also get domains with out .com. Right. So the common one is dot me. Those ones are usually a lot cheaper. Um, and then there's a couple uh, domain services that you can look at if you're interested in that later. Um, just some kind of miscellaneous things. This first one is definitely more of an opinion <coughs> that I hold, but I know some other people have talked about, like Adam Chandler has mentioned this one to me. Um, don't put aspiring artists or aspiring programmer or you know a student studying programming. Like if you spend time programming or you spend time creating assets, you know you are that. You are a programmer. You are an artist. Whatever that may be. So don't be afraid to you know just take off aspiring. It just it doesn't look as professional, quite honestly. Um, some people are, are you know some people like that. So you know do what you want. Um, when you're creating a portfolio, we you probably want to prioritize maintainability. Like if you're gonna keep adding posts to it in the future, like if you want to post something every month or you know every like at the end of the semester when you have a cool class project that you finished up, you want it to be easy to do because when you're finished with the project, the last thing you want to do is keep working on it and keep go get a whole bunch of screenshots and write stuff about it or anything like that. So you want to make it as easy as possible so that it's one less thing to stop you from doing that. Um, and then you also want to prioritize readability. So don't go too heavy on to just making something that looks super cool because if you can't read it, you know, then it's like, what's the point? Like you want people to be able to read the content that you're writing or see the stuff that you're, you're posting on there. So, you know, don't go too heavily into like cool animations and all that sort of stuff unless it's, you know, actually adds to the experience. Um, and then lastly, don't worry too much about the styles. Like portfolios to showcase your work. Unless you're a UI artist, like they don't, they're not expecting you to be good at that. Like they expect you to be good at, like, you know, maybe you're a 3D modeler. Like why would you be good at websites? It's, it's not, it's, you just need it there to show them your assets. Um, and so here are some examples I'm going to go through. I'll kind of show you guys some things that I like about them. Um, so this one is from an artist and programmer. And some of the things I really like about it is he's got all these giant images. And they kind of there's some kind of interactivity to it. So you can kind of see what's going on. And so it, having big images, it's just like, I don't even know what's going on. I just see these assets, and I think it looks cool. Um, but then it, it's also got this whole interest. You know, you can see. Oh, there's all this kind of moving stuff. Like, oh, whoa, there's these cars moving around, right? Because um, picture is going to help a lot more than just saying, like, lanterns. Like, what, what is a lantern? I, I don't know what he means regarding that. Um, and then another one is from Steve Zapata. He's a speaker that we've had here before. And he's got all kinds of images. Like, his style is pretty basic. I mean, it's just a white page, but he's got all these images of these different scenes that he's made. And you can click on them, and you'll have a little bit more information. Um, so it's kind of nice having some of this other information. So he's talking about, you know, the inspiration you had for this, and then you, you can see it in a little bit of bigger screen. And then the other things that you can see, he's got related posts on here. So if you're looking through posts, you don't just kind of stop and then you have to go back. You can, if you're looking at the post and you're done, he's going to try and get you to look at the next thing. He's going to keep you going. Um, so that was those two, and then. We've got two more examples, and these ones are from ArtStation. So don't be afraid to just use something like ArtStation or Wix or whatever. You really don't need your own portfolio uh, in terms of its like its own proper website. An artist, it's almost an expectation that you have an ArtStation. So you know, don't be afraid. Like if it's easier to, for you to do, just do it. Um, so we have Tyler Reed here. He's a, an alumni, and some of the professors love showing his. And one of the other things that you can see from this is he's got a whole bunch of high quality assets. Like all of these are really awesome environments and a lot of it is from since he's graduated because everything he's done as a student pretty much just doesn't hit that same quality level. Um, but the one thing he does have from here that I can that you can recognize is he has his capstone and he has something from virtual environments too. So these are from like the end of his days in college. He has a whole bunch of breakdowns. Like you can see he's, he's showing it about the materials, for example, or he's showing close-ups on certain objects. He's showing the UVs and the, the textures and everything. So he's kind of giving a breakdown of like what it actually looks like so someone can think, like, hey, he actually knows what he's doing. He's doing it well. It's not just that it looks nice. Um, and so he, I think he also talks about it a little bit more on the side because these breakdowns show a lot about like how you think and how you work, and it really helps show that you know what you're doing. 
Um, and then another one here that I like is from whoever that person is. I don't know how to say their name. But, you know, again, they have, you know, this spot on the side where they're talking about, you know, what they're doing and why, you know, like how long it took, what, what they specifically did since it was a group project. And they have all these, these nice videos of you know, what they made to show the different angles uh, since it's an environment. And then they show this breakdown again. So you can see, like, they made this entire environment, and this is pretty much everything that they, that they actually made for it. So you're, they're effectively, you know, using these, these instances and prefabs and stuff like that. Um, and then we've also got a slide with some of the just more examples of all the officers' portfolios in case anybody wants that, and we'll share the slides later. Um, so then, when, if you're going to go about making a new portfolio, you kind of got two options. You either go find something for free or paid to just build it all with buttons or whatever it is on the internet. And so I'm calling those website builders. So we've got some different ones like Wix and ArtStation. ArtStation is definitely like you should use that if you're an artist. Like if you want to do 3D modeling, use ArtStation. You want to do concept art, use ArtStation. Like there's not really a point in making your own website. Unless you really want to have more in-depth breakdowns and stuff like that, like ArtStation is perfectly fine. Uh, Wix is definitely a good free option too. If you want something more extensive, and especially if you're like a programmer, uh, you can post all kinds of stuff. You can put a lot of your images, videos, breakdowns, or explanations of what you're doing. WordPress is an option. But it's definitely a little bit more tricky. Um, there are free hosting services for it, but you're going to have to go find which ones do it for free, or you can go find someone that does it that's paid. Um, and then some paid options is there's Squarespace, which is really popular. It's definitely very expensive, so it probably does not make sense for a student to be using breaking into, into the industry because you probably don't have that kind of money, nor should you really spend that kind of money on it. And then there's also Adobe Portfolio, which I know some people don't really like. I Personally, I haven't really used it. I kind of made a little bit of a mock-up of a portfolio in it, and we'll see in the next couple slides. But it comes with the student Adobe plan, so if you're already paying for Photoshop or whatever, you know, like, this is, you know, you already have access to it. You can definitely use it. Um, and here are some, some examples. This one's our, our Aries portfolio. Uh, they made it with Wix, definitely pretty solid. I mean, it scales different for phone versus laptop, and you can put all of your images and videos and text, and you can, separate everything in tabs, just everything you'd expect from a website. Um, and it, there's all kinds of themes for it, so you know that, that's an example of one. And then we've also got Adobe Portfolio, which I've kind of made a mock-up of one in, uh, in, their, in their builder. I don't have it published, but um, it's somewhat similar to what I have on my own website in terms of the content. And you can add all kinds of posts and just type out text, so it's definitely a solid option too. And then here we've got Foos again. And I mean, it looks solid. You got all the images. You can click on it for more information, and then it also works on mobile, and you know, so you can show it off while you're on the go or whatever. Um, and then the last bit, I've made a, a, a you know a template for us so that we can come up with our own portfolio. If you wanted to use something else, we're going to be using GitHub Pages to host it, which is free. And then I've already created the team, so you don't have to pay for that. And so you can easily just write more content, and it'll take a little bit more technical knowledge, um, but it's definitely very doable. Um, so we'll kind of walk through about how you can fork that, and then start creating your own content, and then publishing it. Um, so first thing, you know, we're using Jekyll to to run the or like to actually run the code of the website, and Jekyll is a static website generator. So what we're going to do is we have a whole bunch of code or content that we write. And then Jekyll is going to take that and it's going to compile it into like an actual kind of HTML, CSS website that is then hosted on the web and people can go view. Um, static website generators, they generate websites that are always going to look the same. No matter who's looking at it, they're always going to see the same content. So it doesn't matter if it's me looking at my mom, some random person halfway across the world. It doesn't matter. Um, and Jekyll is very much blog oriented. So it's got a whole system set up for creating posts and showing those posts and separating stuff by categories and tags, that sort of thing. So it kind of fits the portfolio type purpose very well. <laughs> so some of the reasons why I really like Jekyll and why we're using it is because it's very much content focused. You can find a theme, and if it's set up well, you can create a ton of really cool content with very little knowledge of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, any of that. Um, so it's just going to be, you just create your content. 
it's going to increase modularity because you can put stuff into components or you can separate out stuff into different style sheets, stuff like that. So it's easier to maintain because it's easier to find where everything is. You don't just have one giant CSS file with 10,000 lines because you're going to you can have a whole bunch of little ones. Yes. Um, and then there's also an established community. So if you want plugins or you want some help or you want some themes, that sort of thing, there's tons of people out there on the internet. You can go to Stack Overflow or you know you can even find people out and about with you know maybe at the school that have also used it before. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install Jekyll. There's an official guide for how to do that. So you know if you want to look at that later, you can do that. But the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna download the, the installer for Ruby. We're gonna need that. And I've got the link for it. You can just download the, the latest one. And I've already got the installer, but we'll go ahead and run it in case anybody's having trouble with that. You are recording it, right? Yes. Um, Whatever loads. Let me close that. It's pretty simple to set up. Once we install Ruby, I mean, it's just some buttons to click in the installer, and then we're, we're set to go on that. Um, Got to make sure we set the license, tell it where we want to download, um, go ahead and install. And we want to make sure to have this bottom one checked, but we don't need the documentation. You can download it anyways, it doesn't matter. Then it's going to go ahead and install it. So that might take a second. But after that's done installing, there's going to be like one more checkbox to click and you're good to go. Um, one thing we'll do while we do that is I'm going to go ahead and show you how to download the actual themes so that you can start working on it. Um, We've got this all set up on GitHub, and so you can fork the repo so you can take your own copy of it, and then you can start working from that. So if I open that link, we can see there's the folio theme uh, on my profile, and I'm logged into a different account on here so that we can do it fresh with y'all. Um, so what we can do is we can hit this fork button right here, and so that's going to be taking our own copy of it. And if you're using GitHub pages to host it, which we're going to be doing, you're going to want to name it to be whatever your profile name is, .github.io. And so that's just going to come up with a, a more simple link for it whenever you're actually trying to access the, the published version. So I'll call it Nicholas McLean, demos.github.io. So that's going to match um, my username right there. And then you can update the description if you care for that. I don't. So we'll go ahead and create it. So now this profile is going to have its own copy of that, of that theme. And I already have GitHub Desktop installed, so I can just hit code, open with GitHub Desktop. So it's going to open it up, and it's got all that up. doesn't really matter. You can just hit clone. So then that's going to be downloading to my actual computer. And then we'll be able to open it up and start working. You're also going to want something to actually, you know, type out your code in. You could technically use something like Notepad. I personally use VS Code, um, whatever you care. Or, so then now that we've got it open, you can see this, there's one more checkbox. Since it's a fork, there's some different options. We just want to use it for our own purposes. We want to make our own website. So we're going to hit continue. And we're set to go on the GitHub part. And now what I can do is if I want to, if I open up this folder and whatever ID I use, um, folio theme, I'm going to select that. No, that's not the right one, sorry. Uh, the demos.github.io, that's, that's the one that you'd want. Um, it's going to start loading it up. But, this is the last step for the installing it. Um, you got to make sure that this checkbox is checked so that when you hit finish, it's going to open up the command prompt real quick. And all you have to do is you have to hit the number three and then enter as soon as this text kind of pops up. Um, so there's, if you're looking at it, it's Nicholas McLean slash the theme. Um, and then you can just hit this fork button right there. Um, 
I've already got one, so it's got a little different, but I assume you've got it yet. Uh, yeah, so you said, because it had like the username slash and then like the name of the repo. So we needed to put our username dot github.io and then hit fork. It was, I think it's after you hit the fork. fork. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then from there we go to code. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. And you said put uh, for my own purposes? Yeah. It doesn't really matter. But it's gonna make it a little bit easier for you to work with the desktop if you do that. Yeah. For everybody else that's following along, is are you guys doing all right? Um, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I, I think it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what do you want me to do? <laughs> You're doing so great, Nick. <laughs> Give me back my ears. This is not sarcasm. No. <laughs> the ears are, the earlessness is good luck. Yeah. What have you heard? I have my reservations. Okay, so you got it downloaded? Ian? Uh, I'm, I'm getting up this top. It is fun. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I'll keep going real quick then. Um, Okay, I hit the three enter, so it's just doing something, I guess. So that just takes a second, and that's fine. We, we can just keep going, though, for the moment. Um, so we've downloaded the template. We've got it on our, on our computer, so we can start working. Um, one other thing that we can do is we can go ahead and set up GitHub pages so that it's you know, going to start hosting as soon as we're, we've got some more content for it, too. Um, so if I go to the settings tab in my in your own personal fork of it, so mine's Nicholas McLean dash, dash demos right there, but that should be your username, and then you know whatever you just created, you called that fork. Um, there's this pages button right here in the settings tab, and you can just set it to host from the master branch, and if you hit save, then it should start hosting it, provided everything else is set up, kind of. Um, there's one other change that we're going to have to make real quick, and we can actually do it right here from, from the window in, in the web. So if I click on the, the repo and I'm looking at it, there's this config.yaml. Um, hold on, though, for a second. So you said go to the settings, get out pages, and branch to master? Yes. Wait, hold on. This one, yeah. yeah master. So this is just saying whatever version of the website that's in master, that's what we want to publish. That's what we want people to see. Um, by default, this is not turned on, so we're just turning it on, essentially. What's it by default? By default, it's just not post, it's not publishing it. Oh, that's okay. That's because a, a repository could have anything in it, right? Like if I had a Unity project in there, like it should be publishing that silly web, right? Okay. Okay. Um, any other questions? Are we good? We all good? Is this something that we'll have to do right? This is a one-time thing when you make the repo. Um, but again, like if you guys are trying to follow along in the future, you know, like I mean, just send questions in the Discord and someone or me will answer it. Um, so the, the last thing that we need to actually make sure that it's working is if you come back out here to the code for the website, we can go, we can click on the config.yaml, and we can just edit it here, right here, real quick. So the one thing that we we'll want to do is we want to make sure there is no base URL, and I'm not really going to get into that because it's not really that important, quite honestly. Um, and then we can also update the URL for the website. So I can change this to be Nichols Nichols McLean dash demos dot GitHub dot IO, and that's it. So. All I've done is I've just you know updated it, so it's not using the URL the template was using. It's using whatever our version of it is using. So one other thing that you can do is I'll go ahead and load up another tab to this show you real quick. Um, if we go back to our repo and we go to this actions tab right here, this is going to be showing like the status whenever it's like publishing it to the internet for people to see. I'll show you that sort of thing. So if you look at this, you can actually see the link that it's using. So if I were to open that link. 
this is what the website looks like. And there's the, the edits that we're making in the config is going to fix the styles on this. Just got to give it a second. Um, but you know, I could take this this link, copy it, and then whenever I'm doing this down here, I can just paste it right like that. And then if I hit commit changes, that's just going to be saving it. So then now if I come back to this actions tab, <laughs> and I have to hit refresh, um, we can see it's it's you know publishing the website again. It's rebuilding it and everything. Um, so we'll be able to see that. Whenever this is green, it's done publishing, and you know the current version of the, of the website's you know ready to be viewed. Um, so then, let's see. Next thing to do. So that that means that we're going to have this website ready to you know post it on GitHub Pages if it's ever going to finish. Okay, that's going to take a minute. It usually takes you know at least like one or two minutes I'd say for it to actually send those changes to the internet so that you can see it. So I'll go ahead and switch back to the slides. Um, so we've gone over that. We've adjusted the base URL and the URL. So that's going to fix the, the problem with the styles at the moment. But some of the two other things you can change are the title and the description. And these are important kind of pieces of metadata. So whenever search engines are looking at your website, like they'll see the title and the description. And it helps them know what they're looking at. So they're kind of important to change too. So we can do that right here too. So you could edit the title right here. And then we can also edit the description. So I'll just change this to be like SGA workshop. Then I'll go ahead and commit that. So that'd be all the changes that we need to do with the, the configs. Everything's fine. How is everybody able to kind of get this part going? Yeah. Oh. So this is this is what the website actually looks like. This is you know this fork that I've just made, and y'all y'all can see it. Um, and we've got some different tabs. We've got this archive tab, so you can see all the old posts. We've got this code tab, and this one's going to be kind of your hand tailored stuff. So I've hand selected which ones there should be, and you know, like what order, that sort of thing. And then there's an about page. You just have a little bit more information, or maybe like links to your social media, stuff like that. Um, is everybody kind of caught up, or? So you were saying, because um, the version of the website you were showing was like super primitive and not built yet. Uh, you were saying it would update to look like this in time. Is that what you're saying? Um, it'll if you make the changes to the base URL and the URL, then it'll fix that issue. Oh, the base URL and the URL. Yeah. Okay. Can you go back to that part? Yes. So that bit, if I am looking at the repo, right, the fork that we've just made, if I go to the config file and I start editing it, I want to make sure that there is nothing on the space URL. So you can see that it's just this comment afterwards, and I can even delete that too. Um, so there's nothing here. And then the URL should be, you know, whatever we're hosting it with, right? So my username is Nicholas McLean dash demos, and then you add on the dot github.io. Back. Um, so it looks like pretty much everyone was able to get their fork and we can see the published version. Um, the next thing is gonna be, you know, how do you add your own content? You know, how do you like work on it locally so you're not just doing all these changes in the website because that's stupid. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just cancel that. Um, and we can keep looking at the next stuff. So we've got two things. You know, first thing you're probably going to want to do is update your socials, right? Like you might have more social media stuff that you want to share than, than what we have. So like I just have GitHub, uh, email, and LinkedIn. But you know, maybe you want to include your Instagram or whatever else. I don't know. Um, so if we open up the project in VS Code or something, uh, we can see there's the data folder. And there's a socials.yaml file. So this is, if you change this, that'll update that about page. Um, so I've got it set up right here. And you can kind of just follow something similar to this. Um, so if I want to add something else, I can just come in here and I can you know, copy it down here. So if I want to include Instagram, you know, I would you know, make sure to name that. Then I'd give it some kind of value of some sort. And then. We'll give it a redirect, which I'll show you in a few minutes. I'll call it Instagram. And then 
we'd want to update, you know, how, like, this is the icon, so we're using Font Awesome for icons, and so a good bet is you can look at the other ones and just kind of guess what it would be, or you can go search up what Font Awesome, Font awesome has for you. Um, so I'm just gonna replace this with Instagram, and I think it should probably work. Um, so if I save that, then I've got this locally, and I've got these changes, and we'll be able to see them in a little bit once we get ready to actually create local builds of this. Um, so if we want to make changes to the website, and then we want to actually view it, there's a little bit of a process to it. And since we have Ruby installed, um, I, can, I didn't exit out of that, but that finished up earlier. So what we can do is we can open up the command prompt, and then we have to run a command that will just say we want to build this website. Um, so if you're using VS Code, you can use the control tilde hotkey or shortcut to open up a terminal like inside that same window. Uh, so that's usually how I do it. That's really easy and really fast to do. But I'll open up a command prompt real quick. Um, can do it from here. There we go. So if you go to GitHub and you go to repository, there's this open a command prompt option right here. And so this is just a little shortcut so that I don't have to go navigate to the folder and everything. And so the first step that you're going to have to do before we can actually create this build is we have to run bundle install. So it's just going to look for whatever plugins our website's using, and it's going to make sure to install them from the internet so that we have them for later. Um, Okay, so we have Ruby installed, so that should be fine. Um, let's try closing VS Code and reopening it, just to see if that'll kind of refresh the path. Okay, there we go. Just have to restart it. It's since we were installing it, like it's got to refresh the path and stuff like that. So, you know, try closing out some of those windows and reopening them if it's not working. We've got to open it up locally. We've installed all the plugins, so we're ready to build it and we can preview it. So, what we can do to actually preview it is if we run bundle execute. Jekyll serve, and I'll go ahead and send that out. Send that out in the general channel real quick. Um, actually, not general. And yeah, we'll do it. I don't care. So. <laughs> um, so if you run that, this is what's going to actually be building the website. So um, it can be good to look at whatever is being printed afterwards because if it has any trouble building it, it'll tell you right here. Um, so we can see it's generating, everything looks fine so far, and it says server running. That's the key. That means that we're good to go. Um, we can now preview it. If you want to stop it, you can hit Control C, and then you just click yes, and then you're good. So to actually preview it, you can go over to your browser, and um, you can type in localhost 4000. Uh, there's a colon before the 4000. If you hit enter, this is going to be whatever your preview is, right? This is going to be the local version of the website. Don't worry about it. Um, so if you're working on this a lot, I find it really helpful to have a keep a bookmark of the local host thing. So you can just see I have a bookmark right here, and it's just localhost 4000. Maybe? OK. Is everybody able to get the preview going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start editing that about page. Um, so if you go to the pages folder, we can go to about MD. So this is going to be um, the equivalent of, or it's going to be this page right here. Um, so about markdown is going to, like all this is going to be rendered out and it's going to be put in with all this template stuff and all the styles and everything to look like, like this. So if you want to make this your own, you're going to want to do two things really. Um, we have the socials data file that you can update to, to reflect what you want. And then we also have a whole bunch of text written out, so you can change this to be whatever you want. So we have this paragraph where it says write your biography here, and then there's this right here to include an actual like, profile picture of you. Um, so this was the first one where it says write your biography, and this is that picture. So if you want to make this your own, what you're going to want to do is you can update the text in here. And this is standard HTML, so if you're familiar with that, you can just edit that like how you normally would. Otherwise, you can look a little bit more into it, or you can just kind of copy how, how it looks already, and just adjust the text. And then to update the image, you can either change this, and then we'll, you can put the image in somewhere else, or you can just overwrite the image that's already there. So at the moment, the profile picture is going to be under assets, media, and then there's profile picture right there. So you can just put a new image over this one of yourself or whatever you want, and then that would automatically update whenever you publish it. Um, so what we can do is we can just come into this about thing and I'll just get rid of this. Um, and we can see what that, see how this will change. So if I make these changes and I hit save, we can see it's doing the, the generating stuff down there. If I come back here, hit the refresh button, it's made some changes. It's going to look really bad, so I'm going to... I'm just going to do this. <laughs> um, and then the next thing, this is going to be obviously what you're going to be spending most of your work doing with the theme, is you want to like, create your own post, right? You want to make, you want to put up your projects and have it on display. So we've got two different spots where you're going to be able to view those posts. Um, we have the archive, which is just going to be a list of every single post you have on this website. And then you can make other pages, so you can maybe make select list of certain posts, or maybe you want so reorder it so it's in a different, so you show some of these other posts first and then put some other at the bottom, that sort of thing. So well, I'll show you first how you're gonna make a post. Um, so if you go to the post folder, these are some examples that we have already. Um, so we can just kind of copy what's already going on right here. So if I look at this ghost house one, um, what we can see here is that we have a date in the front of the name. So it's you know, 2022, um, March 15th, sorry, April 15th, and then it's the title of the post, whatever you want it to be. So if I want to make a new post, I can make a new file. I want to name it, I want to give it a year, so 2022. I'll give it today's date, um, and then I'll just name it. Not with gaps. And then make sure to, to tag on MD at the end, because it's a markdown file. And then if we come back here, we can look at it again, and there's a little bit more information here at the top. And this is not going to be rendered on the site necessarily. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and copy that in here. So I'm going to update the title. So I'll change this to be, you know, Portfolio Workshop. I can type out, you know, description. And then there's also this meta thing that you can include. I'm just going to get rid of it at the moment. I'll save it. And then if I switch back over here and I go to the archive, we can see we have a new post, just like that. Um, we can see we have the title that we just typed out at the top, and then we have the description right underneath it. Um, the one other issue you'll have is that we have this kind of broken image thing. Like it doesn't, it's expecting for there to be a thumbnail of some sort, but we didn't provide one. We haven't added anything. So to add one, what we can do is we can go to the assets and then there's the post folder, then you wanna kinda of navigate to where it would be. So I said that it was gonna be in 2022, and it's the, the title that we gave it right here is just workshop. So I wanna make sure to add a folder to 2022 named workshop, like that. And then in here, I would be able to drag in an image called thumbnail.png, and then it'll just use that image. Um, so I'll just open this up real quick, I'll copy that, and I'll throw it in the workshop. 
So then now if I come back over to Firefox and I update that, now it has the image that I was looking for. Like it was already looking in the right spot and just didn't have an image. Um, so is everybody able to kind of get a post going? Um, so um, what if you made that folder? It had to be named specifically the same as the, uh, the new page you have so that I could find it? Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's got to make some assumptions at some point, and that's going to be, you know, it has to be organized a certain way. Um, so that title needs to match whatever you have put in this hyphenated bit right here on the actual file name for the post. Um, and then we saw that the, the archive automatically got that. But if I go back to this code tab, like it doesn't automatically come here. Like I had a, a predefined list of posts that it should show here. And like, you know, that list didn't change, so it's not going to show a new post on there. So let's say I want to update this list. What I can do is, um, if I go to this code page, we can see that we have this portfolio object, and we give it a list, and that is using this portfolio code kind of data object. And so that means that we should go to this data folder, we should go look for this portfolio code file, and this is what it's gonna be. We have a list of all of the posts that we wanna show on that page, and it's just gonna be the titles that we give it at the top of the thing. So this new post is called Portfolio Workshop. So I will want to grab that word for word, and then I can come over here to this, this data file. And let's say I want to swap out the post with images with this post. So I can just update that title. I can come back over here, refresh it, and then you can see it's right there. So you can, you can add more items to this list, you know, so like maybe I would want to show this again for whatever reason. That'll update. Um, and so you could, you know, have one of these for your for your art stuff. You could have one of these for your programming stuff, and then maybe you want the archive, or maybe you don't want the archive. You can just delete this archive page right here, and you wouldn't have that anymore. Um, and then for actually writing the post, like we've got the post set up, it's working, but we want to actually write stuff for it. Um, everything's gonna be in Markdown. It's gonna be like you're reading just plain text. So if I just started typing stuff, um, and I save it, I can, if I come back over here, I can preview it by just, I can just click on it. We can see it's got the title, it's got the date that we've, we've you know, put in the title, or in the file name, and then we have whatever we start writing out. Um, so I'll just come back to this ghost house one I made. And we'll kind of talk about what the different aspects of it. And all, I, there's one post on this website already that kind of talks about how you can make a post, you can reference this later. But you know, we have this, this kind of media object, which is gonna be either an image or a video. So we can see it's a video, because I called it a video right there. It's got this trailer file, and then I put a caption on it. So that's why we have this video here, and it's got this, we can play it and everything, and then it's got the caption that we just typed out right there. And whenever you're trying to include these images or videos or whatever, you're gonna to wanna to put it in that same folder as the thumbnail that we just talked about earlier. So if I look at the ghost house one, you can see there's trailer.mp4 right here. And that's what the post was referencing. When it says trailer.mp4 right there. Um, is there a size limit for files? GitHub's limit is 100 megabytes. Um, Yes. <laughs> Don't push it. Um, a big part of making websites is you want to optimize your images and your videos and stuff like that so it doesn't take as long to load. So if you're uploading thumbnails and they're going to be small, you shouldn't upload a 4K image. You know, It's better to make that at least, you know, maybe a max 1,000 if you really want it to be big for some reason. Um, so you can go through, you can make more posts, and you can, like there's examples already on there so you can reference for that. Reference that if you see like a specific feature you're trying to kind of mimic, you know, like maybe you want a certain text style or you want a header, that sort of stuff. And you can kind of just reference those. Um, then the next thing, I think, is redirects. Let's see. Did that, did that, did that. Talk about that. Yeah, so the next thing is going to be redirects. So um, redirects are going to be just a way of just saying, like, I have this URL and I want it to send it somewhere else. 
So right here, I've got an example of a redirect for my GitHub. So in the redirects folder, I made github.md, and I have the front matter right here, where it's the permalink. So this is going to be what URL I type into the, the search bar, and then I have the redirect to, which is going to be where it should send it to. So if I come back over here, and I put, you know, the website name slash GitHub slash hit enter, we're going to see it's going to go over to GitHub. So this is just kind of a handy feature. So you, you can, you know, maybe send someone to your GitHub profile, and you can just like it's an easier way of typing it up. You can just say nicholsmclean.com slash GitHub, and I can send someone, someone over to my profile. And the um, the socials thing actually relies on that, so that's why we have you know slash GitHub slash right here because we're using the redirects to, to do that. So the redirects are going to be one spot that you're going to want to update to send to your own personal socials. So we talked about how to add your own content, and then you know now we want to publish it, right? We've got it set up so that it is published somewhere on the internet, but we've made some changes to it, and we want it to go up to the internet so that other people can see it. So the last bit is just going to be committing it to GitHub, and then we can, you know, we'll be able to see that. So if I go back to GitHub Desktop, we can see some of the changes I made. So I adjusted what's going to be shown on the code page. I've made this new post, and I added, added a thumbnail for that post. So to commit stuff, you're going to want to name the summary or give it a summary. So I'm just going to say add post. Then I can hit commit. So that means that I've taken all of this work. I put it into this little commit type object. So I've just kind of put it into this little container. And then I've hit, if I hit push, it's going to send all of that to the internet. So if we go look at GitHub, like the repo on the internet, um, we'll be able to see those. So if I come back over here, uh, and I look at this, we can see there's edits from 22 seconds ago, add post. So that's what we just did. And then if I go over here to the Actions tab, we can see it's rebuilding the website. And as soon as that's done, we'll be able to see all the changes that we just made. Um, and that's pretty. That's all I got for y'all. I made this theme though, so like you know, if you're using it and you guys have features that you want, or you want to make changes to it, and you need some help, you know, I'm on Discord or whatever. You guys know how to get me, and I can help you out with it. Or if there's a lot of people that want the same feature, I can update this my my version of the repo, and then y'all can merge that those changes into your own. Uh, forks. Um, so, you know, let me know if there's any feature requests or anything like that. Um, you know, we'll be able to see this in a second if it ever finishes. Um, nice job, everybody. Yeah. Nice. Thank you, Nick.